All right. I'm excited to have my guest on today. You guys are going to love her. Malvina Messler is a powerhouse quantum success coach, speaker, author, and Paris retreat host extraordinaire on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. Hey, entrepreneurs, are you trying to make bigger profits in your small business? If you're like most of us business owners, increasing your profitability is always on your mind, and you're probably looking for ways to grow your revenue while growing your company. Well, you found a podcast that shares ideas that help you do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a business growth strategist and a profit booster. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for a future exit. Because building a highly profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. And that's more money now and a windfall when it's time to let go. And I want to share strategies that I've learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have a super powerful training that I've got going on that I think you all need to participate in. It's great. It's called the 30-Day Profit Booster. And this is where I'll show you how you can, get this, boost your profits 45% in just 30 days, just by following a simple three-step method that doesn't require that you're chasing more customers. This quick and easy profit-boosting strategy can be done without spending more money on marketing hiring additional staff, or working longer hours. Go check it out for free at 30dayprofitbooster.com. All right, I'm excited to have my guest on today. You guys are going to love her. Malvina Messler is a powerhouse quantum success coach, speaker, author, and Paris retreat host extraordinaire. As the former executive and co-founder of a national franchise brand, Malvina helped dozens of entrepreneurs build their American dream. In her extensive career as a business coach, Malvina noticed that there was no amount of business strategy that could compensate for the gaps in the mindset. Since then, Malvina has made the commitment to dedicate her professional career to helping entrepreneurs break through the ceiling of their success through neuroscience and quantum strategies so that they can make an impact that they were born to make in the world. With her background in uh, and mindset expertise, Malvina empowers women to unleash their inner CEO energy and design their careers on their own terms while leaving the rat race behind. She has done that just by redesigning her own life to be bicontinental. In the winter months, Malvina loves to ice climb in Colorado, but in the spring, she's living it up in Paris, hosting her signature retreats for high-achieving women. As the founder of a national franchise brand and the former chair of Women's Franchise Network in Colorado, she is a force to be reckoned with in the, co in the coaching world. Welcome, Malvina, to Profit with a Plan podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today. Woohoo! I'm excited too. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, digital nomads and an entrepreneur. I love your company. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I think it's I think it's fantastic that um, you know, we women can take take the world going and um and make an impact. And and note, audience, this conversation is not only for women. It's for every business owner that needs to be able to. Um, take it to the next level and 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 break through that ceiling. So, you know, I love to start this off, Melvina, with just a little bit of history and, you know, why did you get involved with franchises and then roll into this mindset thing? Mm, great question. You know, uh, I come actually from Poland. So if you were thinking this is an Eastern Texas accent, <laughs> you were <laughs> close, but not quite. It's Eastern Europe. And um, I grew up in times of communism. So I uh, knew completely different reality where capitalism and the privilege of owning your own business was not even available to us. Um, and so I really uh, seeked out uh, to be in America, the land of the free and the land of opportunity. And, um, and that really brought me here. And um, entrepreneurship is one of the most uh, powerful vehicles to really experience the freedom that we all seek whether you're an employee or a business owner we all want freedom and so um, 
franchising is such a beautiful concept. I uh, had a privilege of uh, finding some really great uh, business partners and we started a franchise concept. Oh gosh, almost, almost a decade ago. And I will tell you, I fell in love with that industry because it really helps uh, families and individuals uh, to really get their chance at the American dream, which is business ownership. So I learned a lot because franchising model is also about systems and processes, which I know you probably love. And when we talk about profitab profitability, um, I know that's something that's really important to you. Uh, we know that a business that's got those systems, that's got processes, that's got the formula um, that's replicable is uh, where the value is in the business. So I learned a lot. And during the journey, I also noticed that even with the bulletproof system, there was a difference in the performance of some of my franchisees. And, you know, it's easy to just blame it on lack of commitment and, mm. and other factors. But what I really was seeing is that, um, you know, that no amount of business strategy and business strategy is definitely critical can compensate for gaps in the mindset. And, um, Ultimately, I came to conclusion that your business will never outperform your mindset. Mm. And that brought me to really tap in, go from business coach to dive deeper and uh, develop myself as a mindset coach to bring that uh, skill set to my franchisees and then to um, my other consulting clients. And why, well, when I married the two, that was the experience explosive growth strategy and ever since I built on that which brought me to the quantum strategies today wow love it I, I love how it all just kind of merged together and happened uh serendipitous you know that one thing led to the other that led to the other that now is where you are today my company evolved very similarly one thing led to another and you know evolved into where it is today but that happens over time um, I love the fact that you really brought out the the point that, you know, systems and processes are really super important, duplicatable, easy things that can be done on a regular basis and and give you those those points that you can grow your business on. Um, question for you, though, where does the mindset really need to be? I mean, we're not talking woo woo stuff here, right? You know what? That's what everyone uh, hears when they see, hear mindset because, and the reason for it is why we go to like, is, is this is woo woo because we don't understand it and there's not enough mainstream information about it. But yeah. the truth is that everything I teach is based in neuroscience. It's based in quantum physics. It's based in psychology. So uh, understanding of our nervous system. So it is science based. And the fact is that, um, Right now, there is the biggest and um, you know leaders of the world of the business world are tapping in not only to uh, their IQ, which is what we've all been accustomed to. That's why we go to college to develop our IQ. But uh, you know, in probably last twenty years, we've embraced also our EQ. And remember mm. when talking about our emotional intelligence was woo woo, <laughs> yes. and now we can right. And now we can even imagine a leadership program in Harvard or any other reputable institution uh, that doesn't include emotional intelligence as part of that uh, development. And so in today's world, we have another type of intelligence that is very much uh, celebrated and uh, developed by uh, the leaders and, and business owners, which is SQ, and that stands for spiritual intelligence. Mm. And that really talks, mm -hmm, yeah, juicy stuff. Um, and as esoteric as it sounds, it really brings us to tapping into our inner compass and that inner knowledge about ourselves. We sometimes call it intuition because the truth is that we can hire uh, consultants and coaches that will uh, advise us on possibilities for our business or our uh, life. However, we always know that a line path that's right for us, that we get to choose, that is unique. And, um, and I love working with clients on finding that their zone of genius, that unique recipe that works for them. So when it's applied and when we can put them in the zone of genius, uh, they can be in that flow state so they can really operate at the highest peak performance. And that leads 
to uh, scaling your revenue and your impact with much more ease. Mm. And we know that you get to differentiate yourself from competition uh, much easier when you're not trying to be someone you're not, but rather you embrace who you are. Love it. Love it. Okay. So how does one do that? Right. I mean, you know, we all have, I'm sure most of us have heard this kind of stuff, but really, truly, how do we, how do we make it come alive in ourselves so it can be an impact in our business? Hmm. Well, there are many ways to approach it. I feel like uh, the best way is to really get to know yourself. And it sounds very easy, you know, Look in the mirror, right? Right. Marcia, there you are, you know, your two eyes. (laughs) Yes, let's start there, you know, but um, I will tell you that uh, during the peak of my career, I actually didn't know myself. Mm. I was on a hamster wheel. I was achieving for the companies I worked, for the clients I worked, for my uh, stakeholders. And yet, truly deep down, I was on that hamster wheel doing, doing, doing because I was running away from myself, because I didn't really know who I was. And I didn't want to sit down and and really confront myself. Um, So I know that my sense of self-worth and that self-love was probably really low. And so that achiever path was my way to feel more worthy. And um, and certainly from looking from the outside in, it looked like, uh, like I had the best life. And yet deep down, I knew that there is another another level of quality of that uh, of that professional career and it wasn't until I really truly started see, sitting down with myself and asking the questions okay what did I just adopt from the society from other entrepreneurs from the ways that things are done in in my neighborhood right uh, in my business groups versus what is truly aligned um, that's when I really stroke uh, founded gold mine, so to speak. And, you know, one of the things that was born from that true alignment and putting aside what didn't belong was my Paris retreat, uh, which as a coach, you know, I can coach people in many different forms. And yet I don't know other coaches that do it in a way I do it in Paris. So it's so unique to me. And that was only available for me to birth to fruition um, when I allowed myself to be myself and not someone else. And every business owner has the unique formula uh, based on their experiences, their past, uh, even the pain they went through, even mm-hmm. the, the things that didn't work, right? Because when you're an entrepreneur, you must have uh, had a lot of experiences that didn't work. Until just a few. You got to the, <laughs> just a few. <laughs> so bringing it all together and really owning it, um, that's usually what leads to to that success um, formula for all of us. Love it, love it. And so, when you're talking about the 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 results that you get when you finally fine tune with yourself, and you understand how you know your past experiences have brought you to here, and and your unique ability to serve your own audience, whether it's in a service business or um, you know, you're, you're, you're doing plumbing or accounting or, you know, what have you selling retail, that personality also acts as an attractor to your ideal audience, right? That's right. You become a super attractor because, um, people who align with you based on your core values, but also your lifestyle choices, um, really gravitate towards you and and we know that niching down (laughs) is the term we use in business and in marketing is the most powerful and also most cost effective way to grow your business from marketing and sales standpoint so um what a better way that to niche down to uh, be who you truly are and really uh own that domain and be an expert um in it so people see you as that because you embody that I love it. I love it. All right. So, so is there any kind of process that one goes through to find themselves and use this? Or is it just, um, I mean, it sounds like it's kind of a lifelong journey that you're going through, right? It sure is. And that's what makes it fun. And the truth is, especially as entrepreneurs, we know that really well, that we're never 
staying the same. We cannot uh, step into the same river twice. And that is very true, especially for those entrepreneurs that um, are committed to their growth journey. So I know your clients and everyone probably listening is listening because um, you're all looking to scale your business, to take it to the next level and also take your life to the next level um, mm -hmm. in terms of that time and money freedom. And, um, and ultimately position your business for sale, right? For the exit strategy. Love it. So with that, uh, you know, we start, uh, I always talk about my three pillars and the first one being casting a vision because in our uh, Western world, we really uh, embraced the goal setting process and you can't really function in business without it. And uh, certainly- Well, you can, the... you're just not gonna get anywhere without it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So you can try without it, but you can function, that's true. Um, so I was the queen of smart goals. And you know, if you know this acronym, it stands for um, a measurable and attainable goals. And what I found is that there is one more component that we get to invite to this formula, uh, which is vision setting, mm. uh, because our goals truly are supposed to support the vision. And when it, the going gets hard, it's that vision, that greater vision that really will pull us to greatness, that will uh, give us that boost of resilience and determination. And, um, and so I would invite everyone to, to start by answering this question. What is your vision for not just business, but life? Because business is not separate from our life. It's, it's just one domain. It's um, one, it's one look, tool in life. Yes, it's one vehicle, how we actually make an impact. Uh, so look at this, uh, what is it that you're longing for? What do you want more of? Uh, what uh, discontent are you experiencing in life? And you've been just putting up with this and just saying, okay, I'll deal with that. Uh, what are some things that you no longer want, uh, are willing to tolerate? And when you really get clear on those things and do it regularly, you're going to start um, getting clarity on that profound vision. And when you get mm -hmm. that uh, clarity, um, then you can align your goals with that. And, and then you start aligning your mindset with it. So that's the part where we start looking at what's in our subconscious mind, because we actually have two minds. We have conscious mind and subconscious mind. And most of us entrepreneurs are really good at using our conscious mind, which is uh, setting goals, uh, setting the direction, strategy, you know, tools, uh, making phone calls, all of those things. But what about uh, our subconscious mind? So when we set out to do something with our conscious mind, it's not actually conscious mind that fulfills upon it because we only use it about 5% of the time. And that's the neuroscience part here. Isn't that amazing uh, though? We don't even realize that what we're, that, that the thing that we're consciously doing is only 5%, but the other 95% like breathing, we don't think about breathing, right? We don't think about walking and talking. It just happens because our subconscious mind runs it, correct? Absolutely. So you're talking about the power of subconscious mind in assisting our conscious mind and it works on autopilot. So I, I love that symphony when, you know, I discovered that not myself, but when I learned this, um, it was just profound. And I thought, OK, how can I really tap into more of the power of subconscious mind so you can support me? Mm -hmm. And uh, the key here is that before we can uh, pour into our cup, so adding more information or learning tools, uh, we got to empty this cup. And I don't know if you oh. see it uh, working with your clients, even on different strategies, but I would imagine that it applies to everything. Before you can um, activate this new marketing strategy that will, will be fantastic for your business, you got to kind of clean the cobwebs of get rid of the stuff that doesn't work, right? So you can make yeah, room for what make room. Work. I love make that. Room. You know, we often forget that. Here I'm getting ready to take this long journey and I'm making room, you know, I'm getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff and it it's it becomes freeing and, and opening. And I'm sure that that's a huge piece that many business owners forget. How do I clean the house, you know, clean the closet out, clean, you know, clean your mindset out so you can move to the next level? Never thought about that one. That's really good, Malvina. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple, right? Anyone can do it. And, you it's know, forgotten. Kind of, right. And how many uh, business owners I talk to often, um, you know, their biggest complaint is that there's not enough hours in a day and they're overworked and they're heading for burnout. So 
first before starting adding uh, before adding more to your plate remove things that you can say goodbye to mm. and then you can really start adding um and so you know uh, one of the things uh, you can be adding is really conscious uh work on managing your your mindset so when we're removing on a mindset piece we're actually removing uh beliefs that no longer serve us a uh, really easy example is that you know, when we're young and and maybe we're gone ho we want to build our career and we're willing to work uh, really long hours and we have the energy for it because we're young. And then it comes to the point when we think, oh, maybe I'll start a family. Uh, so suddenly we get to what worked for us, you know, showing up for 12, 14 hour days may no longer be in alignment with starting a family or, or you know, um, uh, uh, having children and so forth. And it doesn't make it wrong. That strategy wasn't wrong. So I feel like a lot of times uh, we get too attached to making our belief right or wrong uh, or good or bad. And the truth is our beliefs are neither good or bad or right or wrong. That's just um, what we believe to be true. And so we got to ask ourselves the question is what I believe about this phase of my business, of my life, is supporting me, is empowering me, is serving me, or it isn't. Mm. Um, and I've, I've noticed that uh, that's typically what, what holds entrepreneurs back in um, going to the next phase of their business growth because. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, that's really powerful, though. You know, when when we're thinking about opening that space, right, so we can add more in, you know, reevaluating, and I like to do this every year, is to reevaluate whether it be the people or or the items or the things that I'm doing that did work and didn't work or things that are moving me forward or pushing, holding me back. And when you can free off the things that are holding you back or, you know, not friendships that aren't serving you, relationships, friendships, business relationships that are no longer serving you. And if you can move those to the side a little bit and and focus on the ones that are it opens the door for new opportunities so i think these are really audience the, these things are really key behaviors that are often uh, fogged over or mis mislooked at or maybe not given enough enough weight in your decisions on what you're doing and how these kind of ideas um and concepts and beliefs are definitely holding you back, right? Mm, yes, 100%. And I love that you brought up evaluating the relationships, even, you know, memberships, the organizations, things like that. Exactly. I used to be a loyalist and I proud myself at it, but I was loyal, but it was to the fault. So something, I outgrew something, something wasn't in alignment anymore, but because I once said yes to, <laughs> to it, uh, I felt it you was had to just stay. my own doing. Yeah, and this was my belief. No one expected that from me. However, I believe that. So that was one of the beliefs I had to shift for myself. Um, and I really learned when I really uh, studied this, where it came from. And there is a psychological phenomenon. It's called loss aversion bias, where we are more uh, committed to protecting what we already have because we don't want to lose what we already have. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, because we we it took some sweat, equity, and time to get the, to this point, rather than looking at what we could possibly gain if we set uh, if we release this. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, one of my clients was um, a, a lawyer. She had a long uh, lasting uh, legal career, and um, she wanted a change. If she experienced burnout, it was it, it took several years uh, of that the dysfunction when she realized uh, and she had beautiful family she really um she was about 40 years old she thought to herself wow i really see myself doing something different but cultural programming and uh, the society everyone was telling her but how can you when a uh, college education becoming a lawyer takes so much uh it's so costly when it takes so much time where you know we know that it took a lot for her to to get to that place in her career and so she left the field, didn't even know what she was going to do. And that was the biggest energetic clearing process for her. Once she emptied that cup, the world of opportunities showed up and, um, and she now is thriving in a different career. And that's what I 
see a lot of times is it can be challenging. So instead of focusing on what we get to lose, we get to shift our focus to, again, the vision driven thinking. Uh, what is it that I can possibly gain from embarking in this direction? I think it's fantastic. You know, it's opening that door. And, you know, many of us, uh, many of us listening <laughs> are not in the career we went to college for, or we're not in the first career we're in. We may not even be in the second or third career we're in, but it takes time to find that space and, and evolve. Like we both said, you know, both of our businesses evolved into what we're doing. And I think by evolving like that, you know, we don't think of it as change, but we think of it as evolution or innovation mm. or improvement, right? In a positive um, uh, look at it. And and what, I mean, what I've experienced, and I'm sure, Malvina, what you've experienced in your career by by opening that up and the changes that come with it are, have been have been fantastic and a blessing along the way. Oh, absolutely. Every single time I took an inspired action despite of my fear i got 10 times more <laughs> from uh, taking that step and i love that you said uh, use the word evolution and actually that uh, statement that you shared with us that's a perfect example of an empowering belief someone mm -hmm. can be talking about change as change is scary we've heard so many of those stories and you just demonstrated how you can look at change in a different way looking at it as an evolution as a uh, uh, some uh, process that leads you to more possibilities. Uh, so that's where it starts with low mindset shift. Mm -hmm. So we can start opening up the realm of possibilities because, you know, I um, uh, used to run this series of events called Become a Boss Bait from the Inside Out for Young Female Entrepreneurs. And, uh, and I, uh, as you know, I also um, organized self-love retreat for high achieving women. And why do I do that in addition to, uh, to everything else I do? It's because what I see, especially for women, uh, that of course we know there's uh, uh, inequality in pay and it's gonna take apparently 300 more years before everything will be truly even, which is crazy <laughs> statistic. And by then we'll um, be run by AI anyway. So <laughs> what does it matter? Right, totally different world. However, I see that, um, you know, because so many generations talking about cultural programming and neuroscience, um, from one generation to another, our moms, our grandmas, uh, the, from one generation to another, we've been uh, transferring that uh, certain model of behavior. And for us women, we create our own uh, ceiling a lot of times. So mm -hmm. embracing that growth and uh, opening ourselves to opportunities is on us. So we can start inviting those opportunities because I see still too many women even for opportunities are showing up uh, we're still not saying yes to that opportunity we're still not saying pick me I'm worthy I'm capable right. um, so that's that's a big passion of mine to still work on that I love it I love it this has been really great you've given us insights and so on but you've talked about two pillars so what's the third pillar the third pillar is actually installing new habits uh, through which we're actually changing the neuroplasticity of our brain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, we can actually, we have the power to change how our brain is designed through new habits and new beliefs. And so we can strengthen certain neural pathways. We can build new neurological connections. And that uh, comes with consistency. And so... Um, any new practice we want to uh, build in into our weather mindset or our operating system as an entrepreneur, we get to repeat it um, and continue it on a daily basis until it becomes our norm. And, mm. uh, and the truth is that, you know, I often talk about this analogy when it, when it comes to sh uh, changing from one phase of your business to the next phase. Um, I talk about, you know, what does it... Uh, what does a seed need to do in order to become a tree? Mm. Think of yourself uh, in whatever phase of your business you are and the listeners, um, let's call it a seed phase. And a seed is fragile, delicate, it's flat. You can barely see it. While the tree is robust, it's strong, it's growing, right? And that's where we're heading with the growth of our business, positioning it for that nest again, that sale like, eventually. So um, what does it have to do? 
well, of course we want the environment, we need the water, we need the sunshine, all of those things. But on the inside, the internal thing that the seed needs to do is it needs to relinquish being a seed so it can become all that it can be, which is a tree. I love it. And so the same place to us as entrepreneurs, if we want to get to the next level and you might be bringing some awesome strategies to your clients, and sometimes, I don't know if you've experienced it, there may be some resistance because it comes from that fear and that loss aversion bias. So what we get to do as an entrepreneur is get to ask ourselves a question. Am I willing to relinquish that identity of, let's say, six-figure entrepreneur or a small business owner with just two employees and allow myself to step in into this new identity and become all that I can be to go to the next level. So maybe mm. scale by, in, uh, by uh, having systems and automations or maybe uh, give up the identity of doing it yourself and actually uh, outsourcing. Yes. And, that, and that is where the mindset supports the business strategy. I love this. This is so great because people aren't thinking about that they have to step out of who they were. I mean, we all know that that phrase, what got you here is not going to get you there, right? You have to change and improve and evolve and become become a better leader. You have to become a better um, provider. You have to be a better teacher. You have to be a better, you know, it, it, your product has to improve. Otherwise your competition will outperform you. I mean, there's so many things that we have to do to be better, right? Which is the innovative side or the growth side of any business. And I've said this a thousand times that if you're not growing your business, you're dying, right? You have to constantly grow. And that does not mean market domination like Amazon. It just means you have to continuously improve and grow and become better to keep your business ahead of inflation and all the other anchors that are coming at you. Um, but you're so correct in saying that it starts up here in your mind and you have to prepare yourself for the next version of you, the next version of your company so that you can step into that version and continuously move your business forward. 100%. And I invite everyone to have self-compassion during this process. Because oh, you mean I have to have done. self-grace? I have to tell it, it's okay if it didn't happen yesterday? What do you mean? <laughs> there you go. Progress over perfection, right? And oh uh, I always believe on a quantum side of things, I always believe in creative mistakes because a lot of times, you know, my biggest breakthroughs in my career and my life happened thanks to the breakdowns that I had. So mm -hmm. there is actually a quantum success formula that uh, the bigger the breakdown, the bigger the breakthrough that follows it. And, and a lot of times we, you know, our ego doesn't want us to fail, doesn't want us to stumble. Our ego wants us to be perfect um, of and course. comfortable and, <laughs> and of look course. good, avoid looking bad. But the truth is that the quicker we get over ourselves, which is, um, you know, energetically what happens is we don't give in to our ego, which which is ego's job is to keep us small and in a comfort zone, but we give in to our higher self. And our higher self is that uh, aspect of us that is capable of reaching those bigger dreams, uh, having those uh, milestones met and um, achieving those huge, unbelievable goals, I not just it. for ourselves, but for the impact on our family, on our community, and on the people we get to serve. I love it. You know, it always comes to mind when you fall, you always have to fall forward, never fall backwards, right? Fall forward, pick yourself up. You're at least a step ahead of where you were before. <laughs> so I love it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Malvina, this has been fantastic. And I know the audience have gotten some gemstones in here that make them think differently about how they're pursuing their life and their business. Where can listeners find out more about you and your methods so maybe they can get some ideas and help to, to, to improve? Absolutely. My website is malvinamestler.com. It's M-A-L, V as in Victor, I-N-A, M-E-S-S-L-E-R. And I also have uh, a little gift for everyone. If you're curious about the neuroscience of change or the evolution, whether it's business or personal life, I prepared a Get Unstuck guide 
uh, that will help you understand the psychology and the science behind everything. So hopefully it will empower you to take that action in service of your goals and your dreams. And it is going to be a uh, shirt uh, right underneath our uh, podcast episode. Love it. Love it. And you know what? We can all use a little help to get into something that we try and shove under the rug, as we talked about in the beginning of the conversation, <laughs> that we, we, we tend to forget this side of our, of our, um, of our business, business um, toolkit. Uh, and, and I think it's very important. I know it's very important for us to focus a little bit on that so we can be stronger, better and, and, and grow our companies and grow our lives the way that we want them to. So, yeah, I definitely encourage you to take advantage of that, uh, of that, uh, workbook and this, and the steps on how to improve it and, um, you know, since we're all business owners and we need to know how things work, you know, I love the idea that you're giving us the science behind it. Absolutely. My pleasure. I stand for helping entrepreneurs work less and live more. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right, listeners. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found a couple of ideas to put into your business that will help it be more profitable. I know that, uh, um, resetting your mindset, you know, getting the getting through the change and continuously changing and evolving so that you can become a better company, better people, better life. Well, happy, yeah, happy business, happy life, right? Instead of happy wife, happy life. <laughs> I don't know. I'm <laughs> really like here today, but but it's all fun and and it and it means that you know we become better. So. All right. And as I mentioned before, if you would like to boost your net profitability in just 30 days, come check out my new training called the 30 Day Profit Booster. Remember, this quick and easy profit boosting strategy can be done without spending more money on marketing, hiring additional staff, or working longer hours. Go get more information at 30dayprofitbooster.com. And Malvina and I would love to hear your shifts. What changes do you have in front of you? Maybe tell us of an experience where a change in the past skyrocketed you forward and you in what you did. So comment on today's thread. Let us know what it is and we will respond back. And while you're at it, please subscribe. You don't want to miss future podcasts. And you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. We're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks, Malvina. Thanks, Marcia.